What's up guys, it's Jay from Vanguard Tricking. Today we're gonna to be going through the technique jackknife. Let's get to it. For this trick, we are gonna need a few prerequisites. The first one we're gonna need is gonna be a rear leg round ass kick into a spinning hook kick. The other thing you're gonna to need to have is gonna be a 540. Now, it also helps to have a cheap 720, but uh, it's not absolutely necessary, but if we have it, then it's a good bonus. Drill number one is gonna be doing the rear leg roundhouse kick into the spinning hook kick. Now, we did say this is also a prerequisite, but this is also the first drill. The quality of your rear leg roundhouse kick going straight into the spinning hook kick will directly influence and determine the quality of your kicks within your jackknife. Within this drill, the things we're gonna be looking for is gonna be clean lines, and spotting your target, which is gonna develop our good muscle memory for when we take it into the jackknife. When breaking down this technique, we're gonna be using this red line here, which is gonna be what we call our center line. Now when we're doing our basic kicks, the two kicks should hit the same target. We're gonna start off with the rear leg roundhouse kick. From pulling the leg at the back, we're gonna complete the kick and make sure that it lands at 12 o'clock or above this red line in the center. As we do that, once we've completed it, we're then gonna put it to the side. That will be the first kick in our jackknife. Once we've landed here and we're about to fire the spin hook kick, we need to make sure that our arms stay tight. So when we turn and spot over our shoulder for the spinning hook kick, everything should remain coiled and tight towards our chest. From there, we're gonna turn and we're gonna spot over the opposite shoulder. Our other leg, my left leg, is now gonna fire the spinning hook kick. And again, it should hit the same target. So I'm gonna chamber my knee from here, and then point my toes forwards, re-chambering, and hopefully landing back in the opposite stance that I started in. Once we've got the kicks broken down and we've understood the angles, the next thing is about developing some flow and making the kicks work together. So we wanna be able to link from our rear leg round, put our foot in the correct position, and straight into the spinning hook kick. It should look a little bit like this. So we've been through the drill, but what I'm gonna do now is gonna go through a couple more things on just how to make that drill a little bit cleaner. So we've got a very quick checklist here of things that we're going to look at. Number one is gonna be pointed toes. Number two is gonna be spotting. Number three is turning our hips over. Point your toes, really easy. All we've got to do is make sure at the point where our kick is about to meet the target, or 12 o'clock, is that we flex our foot down. For the spinning hook kick, we wanna keep our toes pointed before we start the kick, as we kick through. And then on the re-chamber, you still wanna keep the foot flexed. So really aggressively pull it back, so our knee should be pointing up at the end of the move. Tip number two for cleaning up these kicks is gonna be our spotting. And the only place that we want to spot is dead ahead. Tip three was about turning our hips over during the kicks. So for this, what we need to be able to do is make sure that our lead leg, or what is currently our lead leg, the foot turns completely during the first kick, during the roundhouse kick, so that our heel is pointing down the center line. So another thing to think about is imagining if our hips are facing this way at the point of the first kick, when I deliver the roundhouse kick and it hits 12 o'clock, our hips should be facing the other way. And that's kind of how we're gonna be turning our hips over so that our hip is facing the sky during the roundhouse kick. The same is true for the hook kick. Once we've planted our foot and we turn, we want our hook kick chamber to be facing the ceiling as well. So that's drill number one. Now the reason we spent a little bit longer on that one is because it's really, really, really important, not only for jackknife, but for loads of other tricks. So you're gonna need to get hundreds, maybe thousands of reps in of that drill. Anyway, make sure you get on it and pay attention to all the things that we've spoken about. Drill two is gonna be going through the motion of the whole technique, but just using our knees. This drill is gonna be from our cheat setup, and that's the same as our 540 and our cheat 720. Once we're in the air, we're using the same spotting and the same timing that we did in drill number one. Just like on 540, once we've got into our cheat position, or our ready position, we're gonna step across. Once your arms have done their job and they've given you that speed and height in the move, we're just gonna be bringing them in towards our chest. We're just keeping them in a loose guard. Their job's done. We don't need to think about them much more after that point. 
So now we've got drill two down, we need to briefly talk about our setup. For me personally, I like to use the spinning hook kick to get me into jackknife, as I find the kicking leg gives me a lot of momentum, and then my arm swing gives me the speed I need for the technique. You can use a side to side setup or the K step, whatever works best for you, experiment and give it a shot. Before we move on to drill three, you need to make sure you get drill one and drill two down as smooth and controlled as possible, as that's gonna lead straight into drill three and eventually getting the jackknife how you want it. Drill three, we're now just gonna start extending those kicks. We're gonna drop the height right down so we get used to the timing and the feel for the move, and you can then add on and make it better later on. So this is gonna be the mini jackknife, the shin killer jackknife down here. We're using this drill to help us get used to throwing the kicks in the air. We need to get it so that the kicks have the exact same timing as drill number one. Once we get used to the feeling of this and we're happy with our lines and you're getting used to the feeling of the kicks going out, then it's just about cranking everything up to the next level. More speed, more height and more power. So by now, if we're doing drill number three, then we're throwing some kind of jackknife, but it might not be at the level that you want it just yet. Let's troubleshoot. Problem number one, missing kicks. Now this could be missing one of the kicks or missing both. Now if we're missing both kicks, then just drop the height of the move. Go back to how we were doing it in drill three and work on more of the timing of getting both of those kicks locked out, just like how we were doing on our round to spin hook kick drill. If we're missing the first kick, the roundhouse kick, then it's probably because you're rushing to get to the second, to get to the hook kick. Make sure when you fire the roundhouse kick that that kick goes all the way through to 12 o'clock and you see the knee in front of you before you start to turn for the spinning hook kick. So if we're missing the hook kick or we're struggling to get the hook kick out the angle that you want, it can be because you're holding on to the first kick a little bit too long. So remember, as soon as the kick travels past 12 o'clock and it's going past that center line, know that it's time to turn for your spinning hook kick. Try and get it to feel exactly like the timing that we have for the first drop. Problem number two is landing the move low. Now this can often come down to your arms. So make sure when we go for the move, you throw your arms up, down, back up again, and rip them through as you start to fire the kicks. The other thing is that you might be going a little bit too slow. Remember, jackknife is a speed technique. So when you throw it, make sure it's thrown at 100%. Problem three, boat foot. If your feet are sticking out like a sore thumb during the move, then it's because you need to work on the muscle memory of pointing your toes. So go back and Practice your roundhouse kick to spin and hook kick again and again and again and again until that becomes second nature and eventually that will start happening in all of your roundhouse and hook kick tricks. The second thing to avoid chronic boat foot during your jackknife is to make sure that your hips are turned over. So remember at the point of your roundhouse kick, your hip should be facing the sky. Same as when we turn for the spin hook kick, your hip should be turned over, pointing towards the sky. So closing thoughts on jackknife. Now, it's an easy technique to throw, but a difficult one to master. You're gonna need to put the time in if you really wanna get that level where you can decapitate a T-Rex with the kicks. So practice hard, study the lines, and it's all about reps, 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 repetitions. So that brings us to the end of the jackknife tutorial. If you enjoyed it, please give us a thumbs up down below. If there's anything that you're still struggling with, then drop a comment and we can get back to you and give you some extra tips. And when you do get your jackknife, tag it on Instagram. We wanna see what you're doing and we wanna see you landing those kicks.